At Ignite, one of the longest running projects that we showcase is the MTR, or the Modular Theme Ride. And although it makes its appearance during events such as Fright Night and Elf Institute, this project actually dates back to before Ignite was open. Today we'll be taking a look at the history of the MTR, the past themes, and explaining its fabrication process starting all the way back in 2016. Before Ignite had opened, there was a prototype alternative school called the Imagineering Academy, and during the 2016-2017 to school year, one of the engineering projects was the first ever revision of the MTR. And some important background information for the project is there was no blueprint. The main focus was to let students go through a trial and error process. Students would work on a majority of the brainstorming on how to construct and assemble the MTR from scratch. The biggest parts to get down were the tracks, chassis, and how to actually get it to move. Starting from the ground up, the MTR uses three different monorail track pieces, a short straight, long straight, and a curved track. The track is separated into these smaller modular sections to make it easier to assemble and allows for unique pattern arrangements. The short straight track uses a 4 foot plywood base with the 2x4 attached to the top included with a metal joining plate, allowing for the modules to interlock. The long straight track uses an 8 foot base and follows the same method, while the most difficult track to assemble is the curved track. This is because it needs to form a perfect 90 degree turn so that the track doesn't get misaligned while retaining the dimensions of a 2x4 to ensure that the chassis can transition smoothly onto the module. The tracks were formed by using laminated strips of plywood glued and clamped together in a curved form to match the dimensions of a 2x4. Moving on to the chassis, which is a module that rides around the track and the base that the cart bodies rest on. These parts are purposely separate to allow for the chassis to be reused for all events. The majority of the equipment that controls the movement is located on the chassis itself. There are six wheel caster wheels located on the bottom and they hold the weight and allow for the chassis to move freely in all directions. We use wheel bearings scavenged from a Chevy truck to connect the front driving section and the back follower section to the chassis. These wheel bearings allow for slight rotational movement for both sections to turn inverted from each other, similar to how train cars are able to follow along curved tracks. The drive section at the front of the chassis consists of a salvage mobility scooter motor that spins a wheel that makes contact with the vertical surface of the monorail track. This motor drives the chassis forwards and backwards while the followers rotate freely and help keep the back of the chassis on the track. The follower section uses a brake rotor resourced from a Chevy truck and was used solely for the purpose of distancing the red wheels to fit tightly onto the track. The electrical components consist of two 12 volt automotive batteries connected together in series that get sent to a pulse width modulator circuit board to have more control over the speed, and this is controlled remotely from a remote control receiver to allow for the drivers to be on the outside of the cart when driving. Now to elaborate on some aspects, the batteries are wired together in series. This is done to combine the voltage amount. Alternatively, they could be connected parallel, which would keep the output at 12 volts but double their runtime. With the salvage motor, the speed is controlled by the voltage being sent to it. This is where the pulse width modulator comes into play. The pulse width modulator acts as an automation clip for the voltage being sent to the motor. It is still binary, but from using variable spacing between each pulse, it can control the speed to go faster or slower. This also helps retain the torque by having the motor receive the full 24 volts sent by the pulse width modulator, but only in the pulses that it sends out. And lastly, onto the remote controls. The chassis uses a remote control transmitter and receiver, allowing for the driver to control the cart from the outside. The controller transmitter uses 2.4 GHz radio frequencies to send the data to the receiver located on the chassis. A trigger on the remote sends an output to the receiver connected to the pulse width modulator, which changes the variable spacing and therefore controls the speed of the motor. During the construction of the MTR, there were many tests and decisions made and lots of troubleshooting was done to ensure that the MTR was safe, comfortable, and enjoyable for the riders. 2019 was the first year of the Ignite Institute, and for the MTR, this marked the beginning of many new themes, cards, and events. From 2019 to 2021, maintenance was done on the chassis to help preserve the MTR. Adjusting tire pressure, loosening and tightening fasteners, and changing the automotive batteries were a couple steps taken to keep the chassis in good condition. In addition to maintenance, more tracks were being produced of each type, which allowed for more pattern possibilities, longer tracks, and cutbacks on build constraints. 2021 to 2022 was a school year that introduced Fright Night, which would continue annually. This would be the start of one of the major showcases of the MTR, with the track being themed as a haunted mansion for the first year. 
For this theme, the Star Wars Flight Simulator body was repainted and adjusted to look like the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine. With walls surrounding the layout of the track, decorated to fit the theme, with smoke machines and colored lights set up to further immerse the riders. On the 30th of October, students and staff attended with their families and friends, with the MTR being a main attraction for the attendees. The MTR had a line that spanned past the theme queue section, and these long lines would become a staple for the MTR. 2022 was the second year of Fright Night, and it followed a similar format to the previous year. While in 2023, a new chariot-inspired cart was made for Fright Night, with this year's track having references to teachers and staff. And finally, for 2024, was a hayride, which took a more relaxed approach, using the chariot carts and removing the tops, allowing for a more open ride while hay was set up around the track. The 2022-2023 school year introduced a new annual event in addition to Fright Night, which was Elf Institute, a Christmas-themed seasonal event where elementary schools, primarily first graders, would visit Ignite and get a tour from Santa's elves with multiple activities and experiences, such as assembling toys, visiting Mr. and Mrs. Claus, and going for a sleigh ride. A seasonal sleigh was made for the MTR, with the track being decorated with snow, Christmas trees, gifts, a festive house, and various characters from classic Christmas movies. Participating students that had worked with the MTR before and had strict permission would control the chassis for the visiting riders. We have lots of plans for the future of the MTR. Maintenance on the chassis and tracks will continue to get routine checks, and for future themes, a gondola cart is being considered, which could be repurposed for ships and other oceanic themes. An additional wider curved track is currently being worked on, allowing for a softer turn and adding for more dynamics for track patterns. Overall, the MTR has been a huge project, being worked on for nearly a decade as we continue to make further progress. Different students, classes, and schools full of passionate people have worked incredibly hard on improving the MTR to be the best that it can be, featuring at multiple events and representing the teamwork, problem solving, and community building that has gone into this project. For any project, big and small, documentation can be difficult, and losing track of progress or the ones that have helped along the way can undermine the amount of hard work and effort that goes into the things that we make. On behalf of all the people who have helped along the way, thank you. And I hope that this will inspire you to continue to learn, create, and spread happiness through your work. Have a great day.